Hey folks, hello and welcome to another WordPress tutorial by the team here at Divi Engine. My name is Roby, and today I'm going to be showing you how to fix the dreaded WordPress white screen of death error. It is a notorious pain because of how little information this error gives you. It is literally just a blank screen that's staring back at you when you try to visit the front end or back end of your site. Now you'll find other fantastic tutorials and resources on our blog at DiviEngine.com forward slash resources, which will also be linked in the description of this video. Now following along with text is more your style, we'll also link the full blog post below. Now before we get started, let's make sure that we have about 10 minutes available and that we're familiar with accessing our hosting panel as well as utilizing an FTP client to modify the files of our WordPress site. Now that that is all sorted, let's jump right into it. So why does this error show up? Now, the thing here is, is that it gives you so little information that it usually is pretty hard to figure out exactly what is triggering this white screen of death. Usually what happens is you were busy casually updating a plugin or maybe you were updating a theme and when you try to load back into your site, now all of a sudden you're faced with this white screen of death. Sometimes what happens also is that maybe you were modifying files to your WordPress site and this created some sort of syntax error. Now, sometimes to drive a little bit deeper into the exact cause of this, you might want to enable debugging on your site. Now, we've linked in the description of the video, as well as in the blog post, a guide by the WordPress team on exactly how to enable debugging, which will give you a little bit more robust errors and a little more direction as to how to go about fixing the WordPress white screen of death. But lucky for you, we've already done the research and the homework, and here are some of the most common ways to fix the WordPress white screen of death. Let's get into it. Okay, so one of the most common reasons why this happens is that maybe there was an issue with a plugin that created either a conflict or just some type of error while updating one of your plugins. So the best way to quickly and easily check whether a plugin is at fault is to go ahead and troubleshoot them by disabling all of your plugins really quickly. Now, there are a few ways you can do this. You can do this through the C panel of your hosting account or whatever panel you might have. Um, but I'm going to opt for utilizing FTP using my FileZilla FTP client. Now, with your credentials for your FTP in hand, open up FileZilla like I have here. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually cancel that one. I just want to put the correct port in here, which is 22 for SFTP. And I'm going to say OK. And it's going to be connecting here. And there we go. I've got my directory listing here on the right hand side for the remote site. Now, what I'll do here is I'm going to go into public HTML. I'm going to go to WordPress content. And now the easiest way to disable all of your plugins or themes is actually to just go ahead and right click plugins. Oh, it's thinking. And then I'm going to click on rename. And then a good practice is maybe just to go plugins dash old or maybe plugins dash temp and hitting the enter button. Now you'll see that it thinks for a second and now we've got this plugins dash temp. And what that does is it actually goes ahead and um, disables all the plugins on the site because basically it's not where your WordPress install expects those files to be. Now the thing to do is to go back to your WordPress site and see if it loads up the front end or the back end of your site now. If it does, it means that one of your plugins was at fault. So a little bit more investigation will be needed on your end. Now, what you can do is then is you go and you restore the original plugin folder name, which is plugins. And I'll go ahead and think about that. And there we go. Click on plugins here. And here it lists all the plugins that are installed. Now, this is a pretty clean install of mine. But let's say you've got 10 plugins here. You would go one by one and do the same thing we just did with that plugin directory. We're going to go and say rename. We'll add that dash old or dash temp and hit enter. And now this specific plugin is disabled. Now, every time you disable a plugin, you're going to want to reload the front end of the site. And if it all of a sudden starts working, you know that plugin you just disabled is the one that was causing the issue. And then you can go ahead and enable all the other ones and you'll be good to go again. Alrighty, so the second big thing that can be a culprit here is caching. Now, caching is a fantastic way that we speed up the internet with by keeping files locally stored on machines and on servers. 
Now, sometimes these outdated files can lead to problems because they are mismatching with what the application is expecting. So there are a few different ways that we clear the caching. The first one that we'll be looking at is purging the server cache. And now when you look at my screen here, we utilize Cloudways. Now, your host might have a different process. Um, just kind of scratch around for caching. And what you're gonna wanna do is purge the cache and definitely contact your support team if they're unable to help you. But with Cloudways, all we do is we select our server that we're using. We go to manage services here and then right here by Varnish, which is the caching engine that is utilized by Cloudways. You just hit that purge button and then that will quickly think for a second and there, all the cache is purged and we are good to go from the server side. And you're also gonna to wanna to just check and refresh your site to see whether that fixed the issue before proceeding to the next step. Okay, so the next level of cache we're gonna to wanna to purge here and clear out are the files stored within our browser. Now, I realize that many of you might be not using Chrome like I am because it's Safari, Mozilla, and so forth. This is why we use this easy website called Refresh Your Cache. Just visit the site, it's also linked in the description of the video, and select your browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Chrome here, and you'll see a step-by-step -step instructions for Chrome on how to go ahead and purge my cache. It even has the different versions in here. So just follow the steps to your browser, purge your cache, then go back to your site and see if maybe it is working now. If it is, you can stop, and you have successfully gotten rid of the WordPress white screen of death. And if not, just continue on to the next step coming up. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna check on caching here is whether we're utilizing a caching plugin. If you're not utilizing a caching plugin, don't worry about it, skip this step and go to the next one. But if you are, let's head back to our FTP browser here. Now you can also do this through your cPanel, but this is gonna look a lot like the first step that we did. We're gonna go into our WordPress directory We'll go to WP content. And now what we're gonna wanna do here is we want to not disable all plugins, but just the one plugin. So now let's imagine that the, the Akismet plugin here is our caching plugin. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing we did before and just add that temp at the end to disable the plugin. Now we're gonna wanna go to the front end of our website, refresh and see whether the caching plugin was the one that was causing all the chaos. If not, we're gonna go ahead to the next step and see if we can sort you out there. Okay, so we've eliminated all the caching options of maybe being the culprit for the WordPress widescreen of death. Next up, we're gonna check out the PHP memory limit. Now, the memory limit can sometimes run out and trigger this obscure, obscure error that just gives you the white screen. So just another thing to try, and it's a best practice anyway to make sure that your WordPress installs have enough memory. Now, the memory limits we recommend is around 128 per application. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with Cloudways hosting, but you can also do this by editing the wp-config.php file. Now we've got a great tutorial on editing that file that we linked in the description of this video as well as in the text post on the blog. Now, when you logged into your Cloudways account, all you need to do is select the server on which the application lives you're gonna click here on settings and packages and that'll bring up this screen here for the settings and packages and here's the memory limit. Now I already have mine at 128. So you would just also go and type in 128. Even 256 is not terrible, um, more is less. So it's very, very good to give your application as much um, rope to work with as it can. You'll save the changes and you're gonna to wanna to do one more thing here. We're gonna go ahead and select the actual application. And then we're also gonna go into the application settings here. And we're gonna go to the PHP FPM settings. And here we can also see how much memory has been allocated to the specific application on that server. So we just wanna make sure that we also allocate enough memory right here. Now I'm not going to save that right now but you'll get an idea of how to do this and how to max it out by following these steps, or if you prefer the manual method by going to the WP config file, just follow the link in the description of this video or on the blog page. Okay, so with our memory limits increased and we're still having issues with the WordPress widescreen at death, 
it's time to look at the file permissions on the site. Now, the file permissions could go crazy for a bevy of reasons. We're not gonna focus on that because we want to find the solution and not fo focus on the problem here too much. So looking at the article here on the screen, which is also linked across the description and the actual blog post, you'll see that this is by the WordPress team here, and they're talking about all the different file permissions within WordPress and the different scenarios where you might use the different ones. And it also shows you things like using this FTP client to go in and modify the file permissions. And there's different ways through SSH. You can use plugins, but we're assuming that we don't have access to the dashboard. Now for WordPress, the recommendation is, is to have all folders set to permission 755, all PHP files 644, with the exception of the WP config folder or file, sorry, which is set to 440, and then the index.php again, 644. This just makes sure uh, to create the most secure environment for your WordPress site to protect it against hackers. But sometimes with the incorrect permissions, the different files can't talk to each other or maybe even talk to the database. So we wanna make sure that these are set correctly. Now, I'm gonna hop back into my FTP client here and just give you a quick look at how you might set some of these. Now I'm using FileZilla as I mentioned before. So I'm gonna hop into my public HTML folder here. Oh, the WP content, but I'll go to the public HTML. And if we wanted to set, let's say for example, the WP content uh, directory settings, we'll right click that and just click on file permissions here. Now here we can see all the file permissions and we can see here that it's already set to the recommended 775. Now you'll see if you add or remove things here, it's gonna create different values. One thing that's important to remember is to check the box it says recurse into subdirectories, but you don't want to select to all files and directories. You're just gonna say to directories only when you set all the directories to the 755 setting. Now, another cool way to do this um, if you're hosting with Cloudways is you can just come back to the screen here and then we're gonna go back to the application settings. We go to general here and you see this button right down here, reset file folder permissions. You just click that button and what it's gonna do is going to automatically fix all the file permissions for this WordPress install, which makes it super simple. You don't need to mess with FTP or potentially mess something up. Way, way easy. So this is how you would use the file permissions to see if you can fix your site. Once you've done this, reload your site, see if it's working. I bet by now it probably is. Okay, so let's say we're at the end of the road. We've tried everything. We followed every step here. We followed every advice we could find online. The last resort is to potentially restore a backup of our site. Now, most good hosts will actually create daily backups automatically for your site that usually go back about 30 days or so. Now, to do this, utilizing Cloudways, which is what we use, it's just, the process is super simple. All you need to do is make sure that you're logged into your site and you've opened up the application that you want to restore. You click here on backup and restore, and then you'll see uh, the restore option, and you just can click that drop down, and this will list all the most recent backups for your site. Now, maybe you just wanna roll it back a day because let's say this was a plugin update that went awry or whatever, just roll it back to the last time you remember your site working perfectly. Just select the option, and then you just click on the restore application now button. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can definitely do that. If you don't host with Cloudways, you can also just contact your support team for the, your hosting provider of choice, and they can usually pretty easily roll that backup back for you. Here, we prefer a little bit more flexibility in doing things on our own time, so Cloudways serves our needs, but you know, work with what works best for you and get your site back up and running. So folks, hopefully by now, if you followed along closely, you've got your WordPress site back up and running back to the way that it was before you were faced with a dreaded WordPress widescreen at death error. I hope this guide on how to fix that error was helpful in getting your site back up. 
Guys, again, this is Roby from the Divi Engine team with another tutorial for you guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this. I hope your site is working perfectly again. Definitely drop us some comments and suggestions in the video or on the blog post for anything you'd like us to cover in the future, or maybe if something didn't work the way that you expected. We're gonna be super happy to help you out. But with that, thank you again for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.